Hello, my friends, followers, and peeps. This is Timothy Kowalski. You've probably seen me uh, on Kicking with the Kowalskis. You might have even seen me on Truth Talk. But did you also know that I also have a cooking channel? This cooking of my PJs. That's right. I want all three of those channels. Plus, I also do children's time needs to inspire the children. That's my goal in life, is to inspire. Uh, I was a Navy cook uh, for 12 of my 26 years that I served. Um, I was actually a saucier, which is a soup and a sauce cook. I also worked in the, in, on the fire. I also did the uh, line cooking. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, Then I crossed over uh, and became a master aunt. But before I was a cook, I was a bosun. I was a bosun for my first six years on the battleship. Um, when I see my Navy journey, uh, you can follow it on my website. Uh, my website is karatetim.com. Um, anyway, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. And about my cooking experiences, I'm also a have a degree in culinary arts from Johnson and Wales University, and <clears throat> I'm a surf safe instructor. Okay, I am making one of my favorite dishes called logging soup. Friday the second. That's right. It's Friday the second. That means my soup Saturday, which is tomorrow, and I make soups every Saturday. Well, this soup, you have to make the meatballs in advance because you have to have the meatballs in the fridge overnight. So I'm making the meatball part of the logging soup. Okay. This is a dryer meatball, and it ain't gonna have the onions in it. It's not gonna have the breadcrumbs in it. It's not like an Italian meatball, it's just a small meatball that you're going to put in a soup. Alright? I start out with the one pound of the ground beef. beef. Lean. But it's lean. The leaner, the better. Because the less fat, the better, because it, it won't, uh, it won't get all that grease and stuff in the soup pot. But I am going to steam them tomorrow. You'll see that when I steam them tomorrow while I partially cook them. Alright? I'm going to take that lean ground beef. I'm going to put a little bit of Worcestershire. The appearance, of course, is the best. Oh, yeah. I'll start out over here since I'm over there. I'm, I'm reaching over to grab the fresh black pepper. Drop my walker behind me. Of course, uh, here we go. Fresh black pepper. Old school pepper grinder. I mean, that's the only way to do things, especially with spices. It's going to have a lot of dry spices in it. It's not going to have a lot of fresh spices. I, I use a lot of dry spices on this particular meatball for this soup. Because you want the meatball as dry as possible. Because you want it to be, you know, firm and hard. Okay. Garlic salt. I just put a little bit of garlic salt. And I'm just going to put it all on top. It ain't, ain't going to matter because I'm going to mix it all in. around here. I like to do things in a particular order. You always have time. You always have time to meet. Now if you're going to do a good spice, 
If you don't want to do it from the cap, put a little bit in your hand. Put a little bit in your palm, okay? And this is what you're going to do, okay? You're going to take your fingers, you're going to pinch it in your fingers, you're going to pinch it on here. What's that doing? It's lightening up the spice a little bit. I'll do the same thing with the freezer. I'm going to sprinkle it in my hand. I, I put a kind of bit of basil on it. And we're going to dry bring it up a little bit. A little bit of nutmeg. Yes, believe it or not, nutmeg. pinch of allspice. Now that's the hard part. So that I'm going to put pretty much on my finger. I'm going to pinch it. Insects for me. That's what they call a pin. Because that's how they measured the spices back in the 1800s and the 1700s. When a lot of these type of dishes which they came out with. I mean, that my uh, uh, the mac and cheese one that I just did. Put some parsley in there. A little bit of green, why not? Same thing with the clove. You want a very, very small amount of clove. Clove is very, very powerful and it will overpower the dish if you put too much. I mean, you can barely see the clove go in, but that little tin I put in there is more than enough. Because we're lasting a long time. And then I always put turmeric. Turmeric is very good for the body. I love turmeric. I put turmeric in almost everything. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it, right? Now I'm going to put the egg in here. The egg is going to make the meat. Put the meat together, help put the meat together. I'm just gonna put two eggs. My nice clean hands. Make sure that the eggs are clean, I'll clean them again since I just pinched spices. Yeah, my balance is a little bit off today. I have my up and down days. Um, it is getting better. I mentioned that in the last video. It is getting better. If you, if you follow me on Chicken with the Koskis, you'll see my health update. I, I, I am getting a little better. I'm getting used to the new uh, 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 regimen, uh, pill regimen from the VA, sadly. Um, and I'm getting used to it. I'm going to be starting my workout soon. Typical Italian meatball. When I make an Italian meatball, though, I make huge Italian meatballs like this big, and I make like some massive spaghetti stuff, man. It is crazy. But I, I, but I always put an egg or two in a meatball because it helps. The, the form it and keep it together. Alright. Now, to form these, get my hand to get that down. Uh, using this as a hand towel. So, and 
make sure you separate your hand. Tell you for your hand, hand, hand. Tell you for the dishes. Tell you for the dishes is in the laundry. Uh, I just got this out from my hand towel right now. Plus, I have two nice hand towels hanging over my um, little aisle thing. Two spoons. You take the spoon, okay? And you don't gotta make it any higher than those two spoons. See what I'm saying? So that's basically what I do. I'm gonna take both spoons, like this. I'm gonna put the spoons kind of together. And that's how I measure how much meat I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna use that much meat. The meatball is going to be small, so you're going to take about a make. You're going to roll it in your hand, roll it, form it, roll it, and you want to roll it as tightly as you can in your hand. And these are going to sit in the fridge overnight, right? So. See? That's how I do. And I'm going to put it around this edge. This plate. And each meatball is going to be that size all the way around the plate. You can see the plate? Each meatball is going to be that size. I'll do one more to show you. Now I'm going to grab the other spoon. Basically, I'm just going to take the two spoons of meat, kind of put the spoons together. Whatever falls out, that falls out. And I'm just going to take whatever meat's left. And that's how I, I measure my meat for my meatballs. tomorrow too when I make the actual soup you know or well, what is your favorite soup well, this is a very unique soup uh, the noodles I'm gonna have the noodles rolled out tomorrow so you'll be able to see the noodles on this board and uh, remember when I made the noodles when I made the retro mac and cheese I couldn't find the pecorino or the um, or the Romano, dry Romano, that, that's what would melt better with the water because they didn't use the milk. They, put, they might have put a splash of heavy cream at the end. They didn't use the, you know, that we do to make the creamy mac and cheese. It was a totally, totally different recipe. That was a 1765 recipe of mac and cheese. So it was a whole different thing. Um, but I'm going to have my noodles laid out and I'm going to show you how these are going to be a little bit bigger for this soup than it was for the mac and cheese. So I'm going to have one laid out I'm going to cut the noodles again and I know, uh, I'll put a link also on the video of, uh, of the uh, of the Western mac and cheese so you can see how I rolled out and how I made the noodles. Uh, basically the same way I make my pierogi noodles except they use two eggs instead of one. Okay? But that's that's how I do my meatballs. I'm just gonna do my meatballs here and I'll see you in the next part of the video. Thank you. Alright my friends there's the rolled meatballs. That's uh sixteen meatballs. Now for the church when I made this I had about thirty two to uh, almost 40 meatballs. Um, do have a little tiny bit of meat left in the bowl, but maybe one or two more meatballs. Maybe. But uh, this is going to be enough for just my wife and I. It's going to make quite a bit of soup. 
Um, I'll see you in the next part uh, tomorrow. I am back. It is the next day. It's Saturday. It's a little afternoon. A very windy, windy, windy day on the uh, 3rd of third? Yeah. February. Uh, as I turn my camera, see I had my meatballs in this fridge and they were covered. There they are. See, isn't that beautiful? Beautiful meatballs. Now these meatballs, I'm going to put on this parchment paper and I'm going to put it in the oven to dry out. Now the other way you can do it is steam it. I know I mentioned steaming it before, but I'm just going to put it on a parchment paper, put it on the boiler, dry out the meatballs a little bit, give it a little bit of crunch. Uh, I love that little crunch on the meatball, right? So that's what I'm going to do now. And then I'm going to make the uh, noodles, and then I'm going to show you how the soup is made. Make a small batch of me soup. Here's my meatballs on the parchment. Um, the advantage of steaming them, though, they'll stay more round. They won't get flat at the bottom. But uh, advantages of putting them under the boiler to get a little crunch. Say about how you like them. Yes, parchment will burn a little bit at high heat. You got to really watch that oven. But there are my 16 meatballs. Remember, when I made the bigger batch for church, I made 32 meatballs. You see how they got all crunchy? That gives you a nice crunchy meatball. And a lot of the grease is now cooked off now, too. I'm going to let that cool down. I'm going to put them in this container right here. It is my, uh, my dough for my noodles. You've seen me do it before. Uh, like I said, I'm going to share a link below of uh, how I make noodles uh, with uh, my homemade uh, retro mac and cheese. All right. The second, second row here. And I'm going to cut this bigger. And I like this, and these ones are a little sticky. They're a little sticky. But I kind of make them in like a dough, rolled up dough like this, uh, with the dough in my hand. And that's the way I've been doing these. This is one of the dough in my hand. Um, the logging suit is a rustic suit. Think about a winter in a cabin, and all you got is an old school recipe of how to make black like biscuits. So you're taking a biscuit dough and then you're rolling up this biscuit dough, making it into these shapes, and then then you have these chunks of a beef from your pasture. But the meatballs didn't come in until later. I'm not exactly sure when the meatball recipe came in. Uh, this was actually on one of the old Navy recipe cards. The meatballs, to me, that makes the logging soup. With the meatballs, the noodles, and all the vegetables and everything that's in it, it's really healthy and hearty. Otherwise, it's more like a beef vegetable soup with a homemade noodle. Um, so, I make the meatball version of the logging soup. And I'm telling you, if you ever make this, you got, it's, it's to die for. I'm going to keep rolling up these. Yeah, that one didn't turn out very good. I'll keep rolling up this noodle dough like this. And uh, I'm going to show you how the soup comes together. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe on this Saturday. I had the Mexico is stormy. Uh, it's really windy. Um, 
I don't know what it's like where you're at, if you're in the Midwest or snowing or whatnot, but just stay warm, stay safe. Uh, try to have some fun over the winter. Have fun, play a video game. I don't care if you're 8 or 80. You can always have fun. You can always play a video game. Even if you don't want to just play with your grandkids or your kids. You know, be a little childish at heart and have some fun. Because we only have one life on this earth. We only have one life on this earth, so enjoy it. Don't, don't, every day doesn't have to be serious. Like, you, know, you have to be serious at work or whatnot. But every day doesn't have to be serious. Have fun. Be a little childish. Have some fun. Alright? Um, actually, that's gonna, that's just me, uh, uh, ranting. I've been, uh, I've been being cyber bullied. Uh, probably saw a video on my last channel on kicking with the Krawskis on my health update. Uh, like I said, I'm doing better and, uh, I'm gonna continue making this vlog and soon to get it done. Uh, I'll see you in the next part where I actually have the stuff in the pot going. Alright, there's my kind of like a nanoki noodle. They warm up like this. Little rounder. Nice, huh? And uh, my crunchy meatballs. They have a nice firm texture. And uh, my soup pot. I'll show you how the logging soup comes together. Now, this, like all soups, this, like all soups, and if I would just came from, to, from a guy in the cabin, you know, in the wintertime. And what were soups? It was just things that was thrown together that was left over. I left out potatoes, onions, carrots, or whatnot. Uh, some meat, some horse meat, or whatever. Beef or lamb, or whatever. And they would just chop it up, and they would put it together and make soups and stews. You know, that's... And so... What I can really chase down the origins of the of how logging soup really came about. I just know that the Navy had a recipe that we used um, elbow mac noodles and meatballs, and the elbow mac noodles does not work out for this soup. So I looked up other uh, things for soup and uh, said, hey. I could just make my homemade noodles like I do with mac and cheeses and stuff, you know. Uh, and then, so, uh, this is my version of, of the logging soup. Oh, right, you can see, look at the noodles cooking. All right, um, my apologies, I had my camera up on the tripod, uh, but it was completely blurry of me putting this together. I don't know why. Uh, I don't. I just can't seem to get a decent camera anymore. Uh, I might have to just go back to using my old one that would actually work on the high up. Uh, my old uh, silver one. And just tape the bottom. Um, anyway. <clears throat> I added, you know, a half thing of water. And, and the advantage is I get a water thing right here by my sink. So I can just turn the water on. Yeah, like good luck. And I can just go like that. And I can fill up some of the water in the soup. Okay? So I put it half full. Then I added. Some ham base, just one teaspoon, okay, and one teaspoon of the beef base. Now, normally I would have some frozen ham base or something left over from a ham that I would cook or something that would be in my freezer, and I would actually use that that juice from that. All right, that really has a good flavor to the soup. Okay, then. I added my, some more turmeric, always, a little chili, the same stuff that's on gold milk, a little chili, just a pinch, a little nutmeg, 
a dash of cayenne, put a little kick in it, and this nice, savory, uh, pungent, pungent, there's a pungent spice, the cumin, goes great in this soup, alright? And just a little pinch of salt, since the base has a lot of salt in it, this is my sea salt, okay? And, and then my black pepper in my grinder. That's what's going on in here. And now the next part, I'm done trying to stand, I hope my camera, I usually have it on a tripod. Uh, and the next part, I'm, I'm going to show you um, how I, uh, the rest of the stuff's in the soup. I'm going to let this simmer down for a while and really get the flavor of the broth going first. Uh, actually, put it on the tripod and I have my meatballs. I hope this one not, not going to be brewy. Uh, this one's not as high up. I'm not getting the whole uh, counter like there was in the other one. I could do that with my silver camera. Um, anyway, I'm going to add my meatballs to the soup and my tomatoes. Oh, shoot. This ain't going the way I planned it, guys. Uh, the ups and downs of trying to make videos for you guys. Um, maybe I'll just quit this channel. Look at these meatballs. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, God. They're going to just float right down top. This is going to be hearty and flavorful. And the, and the noodles is like a uh, uh, nuki. And to that, I'm going to add, I guess, to that, you're going to add, <clears throat> Now, frozen peas are better or fresh peas from a garden. That's why what that's what they would have used, of course, back in the day when they had the soup, everything was fresh from the garden. You would have to pop your peas and all that stuff. Now you can see this, how it's cooking down. A little bit of grease on the moot bars, but not bad. That's why you have to partially cook them first or steam them first. Bake them or steam them. This is going to have a nice little crunch. It's going to be really de delicious. I used the Libby uh, sweet peas. You can, you can see my hand. And then I used the uh, Chris's Best Bit Northern Beans. Usually I would cook my beans overnight. Uh, my white beans I would drain and soak. I'm out of, I was out of fresh white beans. I had my wife go get me some this morning. I was going to soak the white beans last night after I made the meatballs. Uh, but I didn't have any to soak. So unfortunately I'm using canned beans. But it's better with the uh, fresh beans of course. But it still will be good. And then, add these tomatoes. I open up the can of tomatoes. That's what I do now. This can of tomato is nasty. Get that can flavor, okay? So, I put it now in, in these little containers, the bottom. Put a little pinch of sugar, a little pinch of salt, maybe a little black pepper. Let it sit in the fridge. I already, I already pinched it with my hand, and I'll do that again as I pour this. And it's been cleaned. And I'm going to pour the tomato in here. And this is just a half batch. Imagine a full batch I made for the church. I've only had this pot really full. Now it's all going to cook down. And uh, I'll see you doing the taste test part of this. But there is my delicious, delicious, can you see me? Delicious 
uh, logging soup, my version of logging soup. Oh my God. If you ever make this, it takes some time, but it is uh, really good. My walk is behind me. I'm ready to fall over. This wore me out the last, last couple of days. Okay. See you in the next the taste test. Okay, this is it. Look. Mm. Look at that, man. Look at that. See how it's cooked down? It's been cooking for a little over an hour. Um, and that's what you want to do. You want to cook it down. And that's how you make a good soup. You don't just serve a soup out of way when you put the stuff in it. A good soup was slowly cooked for a while, for at least an hour. Simmered down. Uh, actually, this has been in now for uh, 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 an hour and 24 minutes. Wow. I just turned the heat off. Uh, we're getting ready to eat. Um, but there it is. Yum. Logging soup in a bowl. Okay. Uh, it's the finished project, of course, and I'm going to sample it. I'll grab a part of a meatball and some of my, this, my noodle. A little bit of peas. There you go. Going in, man. Log and soup. Mm. Next cooking video will be creamy mac and cheese.